can't be a standardization of moves, for example, in breaking. You can't have a set of moves that are required uh, to look in a certain way. You can't yeah. all have to do your footwork in one way or your, your air flares or your power moves in one way, you know, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. would in gymnastics. Gymnastics has a standardized set of moves that have to be executed in a certain way. Yes. You know, breaking is not like that. It's about the individual style that you put onto your moves. Um, and so that is also, again, taken into consideration. And it's not an easy task, you know, no. because that is subjective. So you're effectively, you know, you have to take that into consideration and how the guys have done it and how they've, taken, <laughs> how they've implemented that in their judging system is pretty impressive. Yeah, I would imagine gently. <laughs> yeah. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Trust me, this is the place to be for all your street culture, uh, music and more. Yo, big up all the regulars, all the people subscribing, getting involved, sharing is caring and all that business. GraffitiKings.co.uk, StrainStation.co.uk, hold tight, everybody that are uh, avid in the support. And uh, we are about to jump into this. <laughs> My friend here has had a legacy of a career thus far um, in building what could only be described as the foundations of breakdancing in the UK and into the rest of the world um, with a new collaboration partnership with Undisputed and the B-Boy Champs that has literally just happened and I had the best time of my life and we'll talk more about it, the roundup, some more, the legendary DJ Hooch inside the place. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Finally, wow. <laughs> you right? What an honor. <laughs> we got it, brother. We got it. We made it. We made it. <laughs> but it's not, it's been no mean feat uh, or leg, shall we say, because <laughs> there was an extensive incident that went down last week at the B Boy Champs, bro. What happened? Dude, we were just about to uh, start the, uh, the event and um, I was doing some last minute prep. And I just uh, jumped off one of the risers, uh, as you do, you know, no, no big thing. <laughs> and I just, Landed awkwardly, rolled over, broke my ankle, um, messed up all the tendons. Yeah, just on the floor in agony. And um, I thought, okay, this is a new one. How are we going to deal with this? <laughs> <laughs> and um, at first I thought I'd get away with it. You know, I tried to style it. I was just, uh, yeah, I just rolled it. It's okay. But I knew deep down there was something wrong. So I had to go to hospital. Wow. But amazingly i i got seen straight away i got x i mean probably because of the sight of it and the way it looked they just went x-ray straight away Jeez, how did it look yeah. how did uh, it, it look? was it was it was wasn't wasn't pretty it looked really? like i had a melon on the side of my ankle um Seriously? it really was kind of weird and uh <sighs> so they yeah they x-rayed it and confirmed straight away about the break and said that you've done extensive ligament damage but we'll give you a uh, a boot because do, they don't put it if it's a clean break and it hasn't moved the bone. They put you in this this kind of uh, you know you must have seen them the the boots that they strap up around your leg. Yeah, like a plastic thing that kind of it, it's almost like a, a, an an impact. Um, yes. Thing, isn't it? That's right. And so they said, yeah, there you go. Look, you you should be okay. You need to have a follow up appointment at your fracture clinic and stuff. Yeah. Go home and rest. I said, go home. <laughs> Come back to my event. <laughs> like a soul, like. A true, a true <laughs> captain of a ship, for real, for real. <laughs> so I did. I just came back and 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 then I think everyone was a bit like, whoa, what are you doing back? And I was like, nah, man, I'm not going to. We've been mm. away for three years over COVID. It's champs. It's it's my baby. Mm. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to not be here. I'm going to be here. So that was it. Mm. So I, I, I had to do everything from, a sta- uh, from the side of the stage sitting down. But, you know, the mm. team, the team was there. Everyone did what they needed to do um and uh and we did and we still had fun so yeah mm. all good it was testament it, 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 you recognized leadership and i think from a team especially a breakdancing uh event as well where 
there's there's high risks of breakage anywhere. I think the fact in those in this extreme circumstance where you are able to do that, that's that's just testament to your character. And and furthermore, the team, the reaction and response. It was just a. It, it was a. Like, Let's get this done. Let's keep it moving. It's fucking. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in I guess I guess it's what it's twenty six years now. So it's like. You know, it had to happen some some time. Some time. I mean, there has been accidents at champs, and and breakers have hurt themselves. We've sent people to hospital. Really? But this is the first time that it happened to me. So yeah, um, I've you know I, over the years I, I have been sick at, at the champs. I've I've been, I've you know I've been ill, but you know nothing like that. And I, I for a minute I did think, okay, yeah, I'm I might have to sit this one out. But mm. in the end, I sat I sat this one in. Yeah. And remarkably so as well. King Hooch, man. Like, <laughs> let's get into this. Like, 26 years of an event, a coveted event that has had so many, um, uh, I guess the term is personnel changes, but but even with the sponsors, things that the, 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 the juggernaut of of uh, the b boy champs in the uk for those that you don't know is it's it, it's been it's been a trusted platform forever mm. in my mind anyway yeah. I, like how how do you keep up with that what's the stamina behind that like how do you stay fresh and keep progressing and moving every year i think it's good it's an interesting question because i think there we've been I guess we we were very lucky to be on a such a, a high plateau from the beginning. So in 1996, when I started the champs, it was like we were on TV and we were on the newspaper straight away. And I knew something was up. You know, I, th- I knew it was an interesting uh, reaction. And maybe we were just at that right time. Mm. Um, and we went we were we started at Shepherd's Bush Empire. And we were there only two years because we outgrew the venue within two years. And then we moved straight to Brixton Academy. Mm-hmm. And we kind of felt like all the time we were building, we went Brixton Academy and then we moved to two days at Brixton Academy. And then after a while, we went back down to one day and we did a, the first day at a different venue. Mm-hmm. And I think up till 2012, we were really like, it was just nonstop. But I think after 2012, we saw, uh, you know, not, I wouldn't say a dip, but you know, the things go up and down. Seasonal. And I think that it was like, okay, cool. Maybe a reset, a readjustment. It wasn't necessarily the, the, the thing that general public were going to come out to. Maybe the audience had grown up and, you know, it mm. was like, it was a different audience. People weren't necessarily following breaking so much. And so we kind of settled into a different level. Um, we were still, presenting excellence in terms of breaking and the culture but just the audience sizes were starting to change we moved to Birmingham for a couple of years Mm -hmm. then came back to London Um, but we were just settling into a rhythm where we we were more self-sufficient without big sponsors as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you know uh, the Olympics was announced and suddenly the interest starts to to pick up somewhat (laughs) yeah like um, four wheel drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Crazy. So um, from there, it's like it's been an interesting uh, couple of years. Um, obviously, I've I've um, set up Breaking GB, mm-hmm. which I'm the president of, which is tasked with delivering UK breakers to the Olympics in Paris in 2024. Mm-hmm. So there's been a whole other side, which I've really enjoyed. You know, learning about the the business and protocols of a of a governing body and and how you work with UK sport and team GB and government funding and protocols and safeguarding and all the stuff that you know doesn't come naturally to a uh, culture based uh, activity like breaking is mm-hmm. is definitely much freer than that and I think a lot of the free sports have had that have those growing pains but personally I think it's personally for me it's been um, it's been enjoyable, you know, that journey. It felt like a, a natural step. Mm. In fact, I think right at the beginning, I was asked about breaking. And I always saw the the affinity of breaking with other extreme sports like uh, skateboarding. For BMX. sure. For sure. So, and I just said it how I felt it, you know. And I said, well, look, you know, I see them as cousins almost. And um, 
when they made it into to the Olympics, it, it seemed like a natural step, natural yeah. next step for breaking. For sure. The, the interesting um, aspect to this is is how, and you did allude to it there, was how um, a, a free form um, culture falls in line, quote unquote, with the protocol of uh, such a, a huge organization like the Olympics. Um, and, and curiously, how that will differ to what, what we're seeing now. Like ballet isn't in the Olympics, which is right. And, and you could argue that's a cousin to gymnastics. I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm just drawing on parallels as to like what makes breakdancing so unique uh, as a proposition and what would need to be, you know, tweaked. For the, for the actual Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the main thing was, was that the judging has to be transparent and it has to be detailed. Mm. And um, when we, when we created Undisputed six, six, seven years ago, um, one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to create a judging system that would, would start that transparency because if you've ever been to the champs or major breaking events, quite often the, the decisions were purely subjective. Yeah. So, you know, if you went and asked why someone won, it would be quite often it would be, well, because I was feeling them more or, mm. you know, they, I just think they won. And yeah. as competitions got bigger and, and, you know, there was more at stake and the dancers were really basically training specifically to win t- certain titles they weren't happy with that. So we were already moving into that realm of like a judging system. But with mm-hmm. the Olympics, obviously, they need to have much more detailed criteria. So I think the original system was uh, three or four criteria, but the, the Olympics wanted 10. Wow. So they want everything broken down into 10 criteria. Now, I don't mm. know where it's settled because I'm not, I'm not on the judging uh, panel, um, but I think it's somewhere in the middle, five or six criteria. But it's very detailed now, mm. and everything's transparent. It's all logged, and everyone can see back uh, who judged what and how it was judging, and if the judging was consistent. And I think that's fair, fair to the breakers. You know, yeah. I mean, I think that if you're talking about a jam or a cipher, you don't need those things. It's just yeah. that is pure feel. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah totally. um, but when you're talking about high level competitions and, and you're being judged, then if you're being judged, judge me fairly, you know, For sure. and, um, I think that that has been one of the main things with the Olympics. Um, and that's what they've requested. And that I know that the judging team have really worked hard on developing that. So it is really, you know, mm. down to the, to the last bits. And you saw the way it worked uh, at, at champs where the yeah. judging is collated in real time. And then, goes up on screen and shows you the result, whether it, which side won. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- th- just to explain that, because for those that, that weren't there, the, the judging system was literally like, I mean, big up Renegade as well, my guy. Um, and all the other judges, they were there with iPads and they'd send their um, favorite, you know, who should have won literally in real time, push the button and you see the bar graph go up on who is favored to win. And it, it, to me that, that, exercise such a level of immediacy and um uh suspense and professionalism like it, it's wicked and you know, like you say compared to like maybe a beatbox battle or the dmc dj champs you know you, you've got to think a whole whole different kind of way haven't you yeah absolutely i mean and i think i think they appreciate it also for example within so- uh, solo battles it's judged over th- in three rounds but yeah. if you win in two you don't you don't go to a third round Therefore, yeah. you don't waste a round. But if, yeah. if it's one all, then it has to go to the third round. And that also adds, you know, like, a, you know, the, 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 the anticipation of who's going to take the third round. It's equal, you know, and it, 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 those elements are, are bringing us in line with with Olympic, uh, other Olympic sports. It isn't a strict sport. It's an art and a sport. And it's, you know, it's part of hip hop culture. Mm. But within the Olympic context, it's being judged as a sport. Does that create a hybrid of, um, like, in basketball, there's street ball as well, which I always favour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like hardcore, like, you know, they used to do it for cash in the, you know, in the inner cities, just like battling each other with the basketball. Um, 
but then there is the the other lane, which is the NBA. Do you do you see that that correlation happening with with break dancing and this new, you know, defined, uh, you know, with with it being at the Olympics? I I guess it's going to be. I guess yeah. I think you, it's to be expected that there becomes separate tiers, separate uh, yeah. disciplines. You know, there's going to be competition breaking. And I think it's it's definitely um, it's definitely um, a responsibility of anyone who's with uh, involved in the culture to make sure that the that the jam element of it, the cipher element, the party element, yeah. the exchange and the social exchange element of it remains, but maybe in different events yeah. that, are, that are totally free of any of the restrictions or or, or the you know the parameters of an of a organized breaking competition. And I think that's already been there. That's been there for many years. We've, yeah. we've, you know, we've got, we've had the major events around the world taking breaking and putting it on bit ever larger stages. Mm. Um, but you still have concrete jams and you still have underground footwork battles and you, and you still have all of that. And that mm. is as, as is important. And I think, yeah. um, you know, for, We've never we've never argued that one over the other it should all be the same you know it should have all of those elements like you said you've got the NBA but you've got street ball and you've got you know you've got all of those different parts about it um, yeah. and I think that's yeah hopefully that 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 all will be represented properly we're dealing with you know four decades of or more of of break dancing being in the public. I in a in, in the way it blew up in the eighties in such a big commercial way with some of the pioneers spearheading the movement. I guess there is this air of conflict here and there where it's like a resistance, shall we say, where it's like, yeah, but this needs to go in because it's X Y Z. I think, you know, I guess from their point of view, they they are embracing urban sports for a reason because the demographic that they want to reach mm -hmm. is is within these activities. Huge, you know, whether yeah. it be. Uh, skateboarding, BMXing, breaking now, free climbing, three on three yeah. basketball. Um, so, you know, I think the resist. We, you know, there should there should be some resistance to to try and to clean it up and make it look like something else. You know, yeah. I mean, there can't be um, there can't be a standardization of moves, for example, in breaking. You can't have a set of moves that are required. Uh, to look in a certain way. You can't yeah. all have to do your footwork in one way or your, your air flares or your power moves in one way, you know, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. would in gymnastics. Gymnastics has a standardized set of moves that have to be executed in a certain way. Yes. You know, breaking is not like that. It's about the individual style that you put onto your moves. Um, and so that is also, again, taken into consideration and it's not an easy task, you know, no. because that is subjective. So you're effectively, you know, you have to take that into consideration and how the guys have done it and how they've taken, how they've implemented that in their judging system is pretty impressive. Yeah. I would imagine gently. <laughs> yeah. Carefully. Carefully. <laughs> Just ruffle too many feathers, but at the same time, what an extension to the Olympic games. I think, I think um, the skateboarding, the last Olympics was handled so well. Like it was just so, I mean, the differentiation between street and, uh, and what they have to kind of categorize as Olympic moves and whatnot. I, I understand for the, for the connoisseurs, that's probably a, a huge, huge jump apart, but dude, like when I was watching it, it was just great to, it was just great to hear the names of the moves happening in real time. And, and it wasn't all about, like you say, this, sequence of events that you had to do properly it was just just battle time and i, I can't wait for breakdance breakdancing to be there and doing that you know yeah yeah for sure i mean i mean it's something like i i think you know i'm definitely someone who thinks of of those platforms i don't it's not necessarily something that i haven't thought of before i have mm -hmm. like i said from the very from a, from the very beginning I've, I've i didn't see any reason why not i could see it go in there mm -hmm. but i think it will be a trip when it's there, you know, death for sure. You know, it's like, okay, it, there's a difference between even when you're on TV, you know, terrestrial TV for, you know, whatever it is covering the event or whatever to, to arguably a billion people watching it. Mad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
And what a trip it will be. It's crazy. What the, what the, what's the UK team saying at the moment? Because obviously there's, there's the international arena now, as you say. So what, how, what's the feeling like at the moment from a British side? I think it's feeling pretty good. I mean, we've got, um, we've got a, a programme trying to develop and, and assist our top uh, B-boys and B-girls. Um, we are only just starting. So we're just starting to access what's available in funding from UK Sport, where we can just, you know, we can help the dancers so they don't have to worry about uh, financial uh, burdens with, with training spots or travel to events. That's the things that we're trying to help them with. And we've got some, we've got some top contenders. We've, you know, we've got Sonny and Karam, who are both individual world champions, both, uh, both top contenders in the world right now um, mm. and both highly motivated to, to get to Paris. Yeah. Um, and then the girls, we've got Roxy, who's, you know, our current number one, you know, she's somewhat of a veteran now, but she's still so fresh and so, you know, her moves oh, are yeah. so cool. And 100%. You know, she has, she has the ability and also that legendary status to, 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 to get there as well. And then we've got under her, we've got a crop of other dancers. We've got Shortbread. We've got Terra, who's only 15. Mm. We've got a lot of other girls who are really trying to, to claim that spot. So it's, it's competitive for sure. Mm. And um, we, we, we've got, you know, the next, the next two years to get down to, you know, to trying to get ours qualified because just being top in your country doesn't mean you're going to qualify. There's continental qualifiers, there's world championships, there's European championships. There's a lot of different qualifiers being put in place. And, um, and those are the things that we want to assist our, our um, breakers to get to qualify there if possible by right, or, or make it through a ranking. And all of these things are being introduced step by step by the IOC and the WDSF, which is the international federation looking after breaking. So, mm. you know, we haven't got all the answers yet. And we're, we're, we're waiting for things to come through and, and we're, we're responding accordingly. But we definitely mm. have breakers who could be at the Olympics. Fantastic. Fantastic. As you, as you were talking then, my, my mind went into a, a place of, because you mentioned Roxy. And, and for me, you know, she's got so much finesse. Like I love I love her, the way she finessed the floor, you know. Um, this arguably... Um, who's, who's to say? But it could be arguably some of these break dancers' only time of being in the Olympics because of the the way in which uh, the Olympics rolls out. Was it four years every four years? Yeah, yeah. So you know, so yeah, so and then started thinking about all the guys back in the day that would have loved to have been there and doing it. Who do you think of, of the historical timeline of the British break dancing at least? Um, would you have wanted to carry on into the Olympics? But of course, you know, they got too old or it was like in the eighties, but is there any ones, if you were to have like the elite all-star, like who would you have been like, yo, they would have killed it at the, at the Olympics. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Pressure's on. Jeez. Cause you guys are so, listen, you, you, the people with champs are so non-partial. So, you know, to, <laughs> to have Hooch here and, and ask him a critical question like that. Look, we've, we've, We've had two individual world champions before Sonny and Karam, and that's Mouse, mm. people in Mouse from Manchester, and um, and Evo, legendary Evo. Yes, legendary. Right? So he's the only guy that won the B-Boy Champs three times oh, yes, consecutively. Yeah, so he, um, well. I think if 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 it was, if he was now and he was in his prime, he would he would be a contender to be there for sure. Mm. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I think those two would be my go-tos, you know? Mouse is brutal, man. I just yeah. remember that. I mean, he was uh, hes just magic, wasn't he? Magic. Yeah. Still is magic. And, and Evo obviously won the first two, first mm. three champs, 96, mm. 97, 98. And that's never been repeated. Isn't that crazy, man? That's a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. that, that's as far back as I can go. I can't, I mean, that we had legendary breakers before, before from the 80s, you know. So, mm. uh, you know, but I, I don't know whether that style of breaking was the same as, as that, that sort of later on in the 90s breaking that, that Evo and Second to None had. Mm. Those guys... 
those guys were beasts and they were like, they were competition breaker. I mean, they were B-boys straight up. Mm. But they were competition B-boy. They were B-boys for the big stage. And mm. their, their, um, their, their arsenal of moves was like, okay, cool. Step aside. Mm. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my title, you know? So yeah, they, they, they would be the guys that, but I'm sure like, you know, our, our heritage of breaking is right from the eighties, you know? So. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, for real. So, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, we were all, we were all going down and 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 seeing the the Covent crews and yeah. just wishing we could be as cool as them. So, but that was just I, it feels like such a different era, you know. It feels like that was just just about like the the how the culture was just exploding, and it was it it, it feels like a totally different time. Yeah, just trying shit out on the streets, like like sidewalk and Dolby. Like Dolby was telling me how he, you know, he was. And and a lot of the break dancers of that time were literally crushing their knuckles on the cobbles of Covent Garden, and then the likes of Danny Price would show up, and and then you, you of course then later on you had like the Born to Rocks and the Second to Nuns, and yeah, it's mad how that it starts from such a guttural organic place. It's so raw, isn't it? Wasn't it? It it was like, I mean, for me it was like this culture was just like the most important thing that ever happened to me it was like when that happened my personal thing was DJing because I, I was just like in awe of the, the music you know mm. but the mm. breakers were there and you know Graf was there it was mm. it was like and the MCs were there I mean I used to do a jam I was really just a box boy but I did get on a little bit there but I used to do a jam in 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 Kilburn Square Youth Club stop uh, it did you yeah Man, what? and we we used to do it there, and the local crew was a crew called Ozzy's Crew. Yes, that's right. And they were, and they used to, and they, I was there the day that the crew who did, they came from America, and they, I think they were called Break Machine. They were on oh. top of the pops, right? And they yes, yes. the jam, and they battled Ozzy's Crew, and Ozzy's Crew basically beat them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, oh, I love that know, shit. That that shit was real. Yeah. You know, and that was like how I how I felt it. And it was there was definitely something different. That was like everything was brand new. Yeah. So it was like it had a different kind of feel to it. And yeah. you weren't viewing it from the perspective of 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 it being blown up. It was just happening around you, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that the essence and the, and the and the feeling then was was really what what it was all about, you know. And I, I yeah. And here's the thing, it's a spectacle, it's a spectacle of an event. It's, it's, it's awesome pageantry. Do you know what I mean? It's just the whole thing about it. it, it it's like you get totally enveloped. And I, I guess that's the calling card for breakdancing because you were saying earlier that, you know, seasonally it kind of took a slump for a bit. But, but that's only, that, that, you know, that's through that kind of classic British commerciality of things, that, you know, everything is seasonal. But if you go to a breakdance event, doesn't matter what era, you walk away feeling like, geez, I've just, I was just at the front line of something incredibly progressive. Do you know what I mean? I, do you know, I, I agree with you. I think that's exactly what it is because it feels like every, certainly from the champs perspective, every year there was always a crop of new, new breakers laying down something fresh, taking maybe what might have been a, a one move and putting it into a, like a set of moves for this year. You know, what, what happened last year, someone introduced was now just part of a set, you know? Yeah. So it was like, it keeps progressing. And, um, you know, if, if you, if you, if you watch breaking, you know, especially online now, there's, there's, there's so much footage of, 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 of breakers just coming up with different variations and new moves. And, yeah. you know, I remember, I remember there's a, there's a move called air, an air flare and yeah. for, it's a difficult one to describe. It's like a mid-air cartwheel kind of rotation with flares. It's, it's very, it's, it's very amazing to watch. Bonkers, yeah. And, um, you know, that was like, wow. When, mm. when someone first did an air flare and we saw it, it was like, wow, okay, this is amazing. And then someone did two. And then, then, then by a couple of years, people were doing continuous air flares mm. and, and then someone did, an air flare into into on, like one and a half kind of thing into a 
it onto their back mm-hmm. kind of then it, the rotation went one, all the way around and now they're now they're doing it on one hand so doing full rotations on one hand and landing on one hand mm-hmm. and then doing another like now continuous one one hand air flares wow. and um you know like those moves and, and the power moves are, are quite unbelievable what they come up with yeah. and um you know yeah. they're just I guess I've said it before. I feel like they're pushing the boundaries of what the human body can do. Sure. And um, it was interesting because a couple of years ago, one of the US g- uh, gymnastics, uh, top gymnasts, decided to incorporate air flares into his floor routine. Really? And he filmed his progression. And, you know, he, he couldn't do it. I think he ended up doing one and the crowd went wild. And I was like, yeah, okay. One That's air, nice. <laughs> one, one air flare, you know, in your in your gym kit these guys are doing like 20 in jeans yeah 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 <laughs> Dude, there's, there's something rock star about it coming to olympics as well that like you're saying like you know just just managing to pull off a regular like one air flare i mean it's better than what i could do to be fair but you know <laughs> better than what i could do yeah i mean but like the rock star coming into town it's it reminds you of Dogtown Z Boys, you know, when they kind of rocked into yes. the first event. It's that kind of shit. It's like, okay, these nice little tricks are cool, but yeah, wait until we start pulling off some big, big boy moves. <laughs> yes, you're going to see some some fireworks for sure. And then, and it's kind of like none of it looks good unless you're doing it with some kind of swag as well. You know, mm. it's like it. It's not breaking unless you've got that swag. You know, it's it's. It's it's a different thing. It's more gymnastical. But yeah. if you can do those moves with with your own flavor and and, and then you know in maybe even interpret the music of, as you're doing it, it's a completely different thing. It has a different connection with an audience as well, you know? Yeah, big time. Big time. Um, as I've as I've said, you know, the B-Boy champs have always been non-partial in this thing. And it's just so awesome that you're bringing up um that you're elevating the UK culture and you've got such a, a history. There must be some like repetition that goes on. You must be looking at yourself sometimes saying what well, they, well, they want us to do that as a, what well, as an idea for promotion. Well, well, we did that back in, <laughs> we did that back in like 2003, you yeah, know? Dude. Uh, I mean, like over this, over this, doing it this long, you do have that, that kind of, uh, it's like Groundhog Day sometimes with with <laughs> with you know that it's going to be. I think the difficulty is that that when you're doing an event for you know upwards of five thousand people, it's it's it comes with a with a, a a mainstream audience attached to it. So you're you're looking at, at people who will go to hip hop concerts, people will go clubbing, and they're saying, look, come to the come to the b boy championships. And and you, it's going to be a, it's going to be an amazing night. You're going to see some incredible stuff. The music's going to be dope. You're going to have a great time. But at the same time, when when you link up with a brand, they're like, okay, the PR companies are involved, and they want to talk to talk to you know the publications, and they're saying, well, look, how do we sell this? And we're like, because it's just some just some dope shit. Just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. But they can't say that. So they always for 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 the longest it was like, well, what angle are we going to sell the champs on this year? And I was like, what angle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, say it's on, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, but <laughs> I guess I guess that's because, and that is where maybe the the, the Olympics comes in is that is that you know no longer te- you don't no longer have to convince anyone of the legitimacy, you know. Mm. Yes, now, yes. You know, on on the underground, you don't have to you don't have to um, persuade anyone of the legitimacy anyway. And if you if you're not concerned with that, then you don't anyway. But like that kind of conversation was yearly for me yeah. anyway. It was like, okay, cool. How are we going to sell this? And I was like, oh man, yeah, yeah. Can we just say it? Can't we just say it's on? And who's coming? And what nations are going to be there? And it's going to be the you know, it's going to be incredible. And it just and, and maybe that was because it was a long time before social media mm-hmm. and social media, you can spread the message, you know, yeah. much further, much quicker, and maybe more, more the way you want to, you know? 100%. So if you want to say, come to the champs, you're going to see dope shit. You can do that, mm-hmm. but you can't necessarily say that on the BBC or, no, you know, right. you can't, you know what I mean? You, <laughs> you can't, you have to, you have to kind of manage that and, and come up with a, uh, you know, a strong narrative every year to kind of say the same thing. Yeah. 
and it's a seal of approval, like you say, the Olympics. It's the OK sign. Like you, it kind of narrows down the field. People have an already um, assumed place in their heads as what break dancing is, but just that little bit extra of like, you know, certified, you know, Olympic level thumbs up, isn't it? That's that's what really is the yeah. the best bit about this. Yeah, I think that kind of like the conversation doesn't. You don't have to say, hey. We we organise b boy champs. That's breaking, um, you you know break dancing. You know the the this, and you, you don't have to search for a, for an explanation because most people know it's in the Olympics. You yeah. know, you know if if it's in the Olympics, we better get on board. You know, and that's yeah. now we're we're seeing that with with a lot of the major brands uh, wanting to be involved, um, mm-hmm. and I think it's amazing because we're seeing more and more dancers being sponsored, you know, and, and, and that's, that's got to grow as we, as we progress towards the Olympics and beyond Paris and onto LA, you know, for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Beyond. Um, how has social media in, impacted things? Cause you know, and I, I can only big up Karam cause like he, he's just a Don on TikTok at the moment, but there's <laughs> yeah. uh, so many others. Um, you know, I, 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 I it's the kind of the 80, selfie shot effect isn't it where if you repeat a pattern and you practice it enough you're going to get the the one video you want and then they send up the video and that becomes the 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 best it can be and then then kids replicate that with another 80 videos of them trying to get the extra edge on that piece it's like technology is ramping up the um the levels every single time a video is posted that's crazy, isn't it? I mean, the internet's been like a sea change in breaking because before then you had to be at the events. And then if you were lucky, you may be able to catch some some video footage of it, which was yeah. you had to get the video and it had to be shared or it had to be, you know, copied yeah. or whatever it is. And that's the only way you would see it. So it was in most of it was in real time. It was in, you know, in person. Mm. And this when the internet happened, it was like an explosion of footage and content all around. Old and, and new, right? Yeah. Old and new. People were uploading stuff and it was like, oh, wow, you could see what was going to ha- what was happening in a jam mm. in, you know, mm. wherever in Seoul, Korea. And then it was on the internet. People could see what was going on. And it was like, it was definitely pushing that awareness and building the community definitely to a, to a much bigger level in terms of people participating and being involved in the culture mm. um and now i mean with you've got with instagram you've got tiktok as you mentioned you know these dancers are really seeing this as an opportunity to build their own profiles i mean they're very savvy when it comes to social media a lot of them and um they've got thousands and thousands some some hundreds of thousands of followers you know um and and they know they know that they they they're they're, they're um they're perfectly in tune with what's happening now, you know? So they're like, they, you mentioned Karam. I mean, he's, you know, he's sponsored by Nike. He's, he's, he's a world champion. Mm. He, he looks dope. He's got like, you know, he's got his, his style yeah. down, yeah. you know? So it's like, he's, he's the favorite shit. son of Derby. He's got a star on their walk of fame, you know, like all of these yeah. things build, build his profile and, and, and the social thing is social media, man, it's like, just blown things up crazy you know that for sure ig and tiktok mm. is another another level i mean we could never have ever dreamed of it before when when the internet started and even when facebook came became i mean we had myspace first of all and that was just like that was a revolution so it was yeah <laughs> yeah yeah crazy. it has changed a lot and you saw right after champs footage shared crazy crazy like crazy. everywhere yeah everywhere like I was so surprised, like it's, and, and often you feel, I, I feel anyway, especially with hip hop culture is like, it's fragmented because of social media. It has, it, it, it's a double headed monster when it wants to be, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, I, I, I love, I love the culture in all of its um, elements. The good thing about social media, however, is that it, it, um, it niches down on a particular style or a sport or an art 
and it magnifies it, magnifies it, magnifies it. And that kind of came out after the, the breakdance championships, after the B-Boy champs, like, I genuinely thought, wow, thank God for social media. Look at this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was everywhere. It was really like, because everybody's got a social media account and everybody films everything now. Yeah. So it was like, even if it was just filming your round in the qualifier, you're going to post and then you're going to post some from the finals because you're going to see, and, 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 you know, like if your favorite breaker from wherever is there competing, you're going to film them and you're going to put it up and you're going to put yourself in, you know, it's just, it's like wildfire. It's like wildfire and it's very exciting, isn't it? It really very is. Exciting. And so the undisputed as well, this, this is another huge facet to, uh, to the Hooch legacy uh, and partnering up with uh, the international world of, of b-boying as well aren't you with the undisputed yeah so we like i said about i think it was about seven years seven eight years ago myself tyrone uh thomas who organizes battle of the year uh and yalda also who's involved in battle of the year we got together and um we were talking about how we could basically create uh, a top tier league of of breaking events because we you know we had we had maybe six, six to eight majors around the world. Mm. Um, and arguably that built up over many years, you know, could, could, you know, legitimately call themselves world championships or world cups or world finals, or whatever. And then you had a lot of other events around the world happening day in, you know, every weekend, mm -hmm. some of them were dope and some of them weren't, you know, and there was like, we felt like it needed to create a, um, a union of the top events like, yes. into a, into a world series. Mm. And, um, and it was at that stage that I kind of hit upon the idea of, well, if it's, if it's the world series and, and, and we're going to have a master's event, the, the ultimate champions where they all meet. So from my, from my event, from battle of the year, from IB, from freestyle session, from uh, you know, from R16, all these events around the world, the champions would meet at one Masters event, and they would ultimately become an undisputed champion. So wow. we actually, we actually, you know, that was that was my concept behind that. Like I, I realized, yeah, that was a perfect fit. Undisputed should be the the name, and we all kind of agreed on that, and that became a World Series, mm. and it was amazing. It was self financed. It it was financed by the, us ourselves putting our our money that we were generating from our events into creating this world series and flying all of our finalists and, and creating a bespoke event. And then COVID hit, man. And it was like, wow, it was a reset for everything, you know? Mm. And um, although the world series part of it hasn't gone away because we, we still intend to create that link. We just decided that we would maybe create a uh, master's events that would, mm. would, wouldn't rely on qualifiers or whatever, because we didn't know who was going to be still standing after COVID, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so we said, well, we could do this master's event where we we bring in, a, a you know, an invited set of dancers, but we have an open qualifier as well. And we could do maybe start off with four events around the world. And we were in negotiations. We were talking to various uh, people and... Um, and we started speaking to Fuji before the, actually we started speaking to Fuji Instax before, before COVID. Big up Fuji Instax. Yeah. And to be, support. you know, I want to, yeah, absolutely. And they stuck with it. They never, yeah. you know, they obviously everything got put on hold. And so that was a very difficult period because we were working on ideas and so forth. Yeah. And uh, a global sponsorship is very different to doing a sponsorship nationally. And mm -hmm. even though I've worked with the big Japanese companies like PlayStation and Sony Mobile as our title sponsors, it was, it was a different beast. Yeah, for so, sure. So they got behind it and, and we started working on developing the ideas and the territories that we were going to look at year one, year two, right up to the Olympics and then beyond. And, um, and, and we finally came to the agreement. Yeah. Just sort of like, it must have been in the beginning of this year, mm. and um, and wow. yeah, and they've been they've been amazing. They they yeah. they really feel like breaking is a is a perfect um, a perfect partnership, a perfect fit for Fuji Instax, and in a way, yeah. it, it really does kind of have a similar element. It's a it's analog, 
sitting in a digital world, you know, it's yeah, like, it's for sure. It's just something real to hold breaking's real, but you can see it, you know, Absolutely. you can watch it online. It can, you know, it's kind of got that same, same value in both the real and the, and the, and the digital. So mm. it, we, we didn't realize until we started looking at their, their mission statement and their kind of their brand identity that how close there were a lot of things, there, a lot of their slogans that we could easily transfer over to breaking and hip hop so in general. Good. So we like, we work with them and, and we're just, you know, we're really happy with the way, way things are working out. For sure. One of the best sponsors, um, in my opinion, that fits, fits the now, the, the, the narrative of now with, with Bebo and like you say. But I think the question that people are going to want to know, Hooch, from you personally, is after all this time and, you know, you're a DJ, you know, the African Centre back in the day, yeah. was, like we, we're talking... Heritage to George Clinton. Yo, you know what I'm saying? George. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, <laughs> you've got mad pedigree that pe- people often sleep on this shit that you've done because it's because what you're harnessing and, and moving forward as a movement is so, um, it, it, it's a, it is, it's a tugboat. and <laughs> It's a juggernaut. Uh, where do you get that energy from, bro? Where do you get that? Like, there's a lot of things going at anyone. There's a lot of, let's just say there's a lot of egos, moving parts, big corporate <laughs> things to sign, and you're being a DJ. Like, how do you do it? How do you do this? I don't know, man. I mean, like, I, I think as long as I'm having fun doing it, you know, you, it feels like sometimes it can be stressful. It, we've, you know, I'm not going to not going to lie. Some there's been ups and downs all the way through, as you'd expect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but ultimately it's because I actually love doing it, and it goes back to my early appreciation of of parties, of jams, of 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 being in an environment where there's music mm. and dance, and ultimately it's the same thing, and it feels like. And and maybe only I see the connection that it feels like the Africa Centre. If I could bring the Africa Centre vibe to Brixton Academy, you know, it's like oh my that is my my perspective on thing. It's it's like look, it's it's all about music, connecting, having fun. You know, it, yes, the breaking and the b boy championships are the sort of competition element brings that kind of. There's a different side to just jamming and enjoying yourself, mm. but ultimately. You know, it is, it's a celebration of music. I, I see it as music, you know. The music thing is, is so important and it's why I'm so passionate about making sure that the music that is representing the dance is really, you know, reflective of hip-hop. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's not just there as a background music, you know. Yeah, and, um, and you saw at the Champs, there's fresh beats being made by DJs and producers all over the world. Crazy. And and it's there's 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 you know it's really good stuff and the world hasn't heard it yet they will do and it but it's really important that 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 stuff is is heard but it's also links into the heritage music the greatest hip hop there is mm-hmm. um and the greatest funk that there is you know because that is the soundtrack of breaking and we yeah. definitely saw that in the skateboarding at the olympics we were hearing all the greatest music, the greatest hip hop in the mm. background. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, that's our music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be able to be playing that music, you know? 100%. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's uh, our music. So, as a, as a DJ, you must, uh, I mean, I was, I mean, the, the, it's almost created a genre of music in itself, hasn't it? Break dancing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got its own stuff. And it always has done, but um, this doesn't feel borrowed at all. This actually feels like there's glitches and things that are put in place to make the the dancer own the, the track rather than it be the slave to an original break. Yes. I That's saw crazy. Your, do you know what? I saw your face at Champs. <laughs> you The music, every time... A track dropped, which was like fire, and the, and and you know, like you're saying, the phrasing yeah. is is driving the 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 phrases of phrasing of the breaking. You know, the yeah. breaking's going crazy, and they're 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 pinning their moves or their freezes or whatever it is on those phrases and stuff. But also the 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 groove of that track or whatever. And I saw, I was looking at you, and I, and you just had this look <laughs> on your face, like I thought you were like, okay, cool. 
that is something I can beatbox as well. Yeah, exactly. It's just like <laughs> clever shit. Just clever shit. And I know you know this as a DJ as well, because not you looking at my response, that's the kind of that's the kind of lovering response you want from a yes. from a crowd when you're dropping the tune. But yes. But for real, like it was I can't even bro, I'll be really honest with you. I had such a sens- sensory explosion with such the levels in my head were so high that day. I just remember the whole event being one big mass of, 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 of an energy. <laughs> it was yeah. just so much for me. I was like, this is incredible. Like it was fucking epic. Yeah. I, Cause I meant to pick up, I meant to ask you, I tell you, to talk to you about the music. Cause I saw, I saw your reaction. I was like, yeah, that that's exactly what you'd expect now, you know, from someone who, especially like yourself, who's a musician and makes music. Um, how you felt on on those on those beats because they are definitely a genre in this in, on their own you know they are they are there for breaking but there's something you know worthy for anyone to listen to you know 100 percent. it's the whole thing's an experience and the fact that i mean you know the more the more djs like yourself and producers of of the break dancer genre they make their own beats the less copyright there's going to be yes <laughs> bbc are going to be pumping that stuff so get your beats in you know <laughs> get <laughs> it all pumped time. In. yeah now's, now's the, the time, time. <laughs> it's a total win win for the scene man and i'm super stoked that it, it it had to be you it could not have been anyone else that's fact well man i i'm thank thank you for saying i, I mean i'm just going to do it as if as if I have to fight every minute for legitimacy, for, 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 uh, my place. I'm not going to take any of it for granted. I'm not going to say, you know, it has to be me. The thing is, is that it has to be everybody, but I'm just going to keep fighting and keep doing it because the one thing's for sure is that I never want to think to myself, oh, you know, this is owed to me in any way. I want to work for it all the time. Yeah, but that's that comes through with the passion of the art, doesn't it? You know, you you've got to have. There is a level of handling with care, and there was also there's also this. It, it's very honourable, isn't it? It's what you're saying there is honourable, and it and that's why you should be doing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, thank you for saying so. That's the shit. Hooch, we will not keep you any longer because <laughs> uh, you have legs to rest <laughs> and work to be doing, brother. I, I, I was told to rest for three weeks and it's very difficult because you're either resting or you're not, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, Totally. But what is, what do you, what is resting? I mean, what, not break dancing, (laughs) not DJing? (laughs) My physio told me I have to have my leg uh, uh, elevated uh, and I have to rest for three weeks for the, for the bone to, to fix and for the ligament damage to, 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 the swelling to go down on around my ankle because it's still like this. And, um, yeah, yeah. I did some damage. Yeah. 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 But, no, but it was, it was all worth it. Yeah. I, well, for what it's worth, I mean, it's, it had to be a breakdance event, didn't it? <laughs> it had to be. Do you know what? Like people who are, <laughs> yeah. People, you know have I mean? said, people who've said, have said it to me. I mean, there's been a, obviously it's, it's been a, it's been a, 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 a right, thing of amusement for a lot of people you know that hooch broke his leg at the at the breaking championships you know and um also because um you know on the night we had the train strike so it was like there was a lot against us but i i'd actually said to a friend of mine over at capital extra that he said how do you feel it's that you've got the train strike i said oh well what's the worst that could happen So yeah, so, so uh, there we go. Days, yeah, true. <laughs> hey, it was packed. It was vibes. It was all that and more, man. Roll on next year. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, man. And look, you know, thank you for hosting because you definitely made it your own. Um, it was it was absolutely fantastic. I I know that a lot of people have been talking about this on both on social media and privately. You know, I think I think you you you, you owned it. Thank you, brother. I appreciate. I mean, I just. I felt so at home anyway. I mean, it's been so long, but it just coupled that with, you know, here's the keys, drive the thing. It's like, yeah, yeah all right, I'm in. <laughs> this is gonna oh be yeah, wicked. there's 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 not a lot of prep, is there? It's like, you know, hey, yeah, you just no, go right. go on stage and do do what you do. And and for real, for real, like you can't just walk into those. Like, it takes a degree of understanding and balance, isn't it? And big shout out to Swift as well, who's co-hosting because. Yeah, I think that was a winning combination. Good definitely. vibes, definitely, yeah. definitely. And you know, 
uh, like you said, next year, man. I mean, we're, we're going to be doing a lot this year. There's, there's some other events to announce and yeah. which will all come later. And I'll, we'll make sure you got the exclusive drop on them. Bring it on. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Hooch, man, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Man, it's been a pleasure. It's been good, isn't it? Yeah. Good there. Killer Keller podcast. Out like him was out of fashion. Big shout out to all the regular sharing is caring. Remember that. Make sure you share and tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Uh, we are like him was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Stay lucky, people. Peace. 